they looked at uh, the natural resources in Okambani, they looked at some of the things in Okambani which can help them fund our, their party, and uh, they landed on this land. The land in the river, the land in Mavoko, even uh, at some point the land in uh, Ketengela in Kajiado, but they, could, they were not given that opportunity. So they formed a cartel of uh, some leaders and also some goons of uh, the Kamba community background, as in Kambas. And they decided they are going to make money out of this land. So they went ahead, hired the goons, uh, apportioned themselves this land through protection by these goons, and also seeking protection from government offices by corruption. Then they went ahead now to sell the land to unsuspecting gullible Kenyans. I don't know whether you are getting me. Some people have come together, have decided to look for money, and they have seen there's some land in our region which we can use to raise funds for a political party. So if we can use our political positioning and our popularity in Ukambane and look for a way of a mafia way of operation that we, we, we make sure that we are the ones who are selling this land. So they managed to do that very well. Today, I was shocked to see the name of only one member of parliament in the list being investigated by DCI. This man, Honorable Macau, is just being used. There are big names from this popular party behind Macau. It is not as Macau as as Macau, the member of parliament for Mavoko, who did it. No. But there was a larger team of political leaders. Then there was a larger team of uh, Kamba leaders, local Kamba leaders, and some goods. So when they went on the ground, what they did is not that they sold the land to Kambas. No. If you find, if you look into the statistics of uh, the land we are talking of, and uh, the communities who have uh, been mostly affected. 40% of people who have sold la this Portland land are from Mount Kenya origin. 40 another 40% of people who have sold this land are from Kisi uh, background. 15%, there is a 5% of Congolese. 5% of Congolese. Then there is a 5% of Kambas. Then there is 10% of leaders. Because these leaders did not leave themselves with nothing. Some have 100,000 100, acres, 100 acres, some have 50 acres, some have 20 acres. The, it's only 5% of Kamba community who have been affected by these demolitions in the Portland land. The people who have been either affected are non Kambas. 40% is from Mount Kenya region. 40% is from uh, KC region. 5% is from Congolese background, refugees. But the people who have benefited from this money, the cartel, the mafia kind of formation which has benefited from this money is made up of total 100% Kamba leaders from a party which is dominant in Okambane. This money has been funding that party for the last 10 years. That is the reality. And we have to bring it out so that it can go out there and be seen. So I want to tell our people, the Kamba community, it's only very few Kamba Kambas who have their houses demolished. If we compare the number of houses of the Kamba people who have been demolished in the Portland land is only 10%. But 40%, another 80%, actually 85%, 80% is from some Kenyans from other regions, 5% is from some Congolese. Only 10% is Kambas. So, but all the money went to some Kamba leaders. No other person who gained advantage of this. So whom are we supposed to go to go after? 
we are supposed to go after the people who smartly went ahead and uh, got hold of the land, uh, lied to the people, masqueraded as land, the, the landowners, and sold to these people, uh, the, the, the Kenyans, who are unsuspecting. And the Kenyans went ahead and built homes, <coughs> built shops, built churches, built schools. We saw schools, private schools in this area. Because there has to be a school. There has to be a church. There has to be these public amenities. So people went ahead and built hospitals in this land. But they were just buying the land from a mafia team. So what, what we're asking for is we have to go for this team which acquired the land and sold to the Galibu people. And because they never sold uh, the land to get lorries of sand, they sold the land to get money. Whatever they bought with that money is what the government should go after, the Asset Recovery Authority. We are calling upon the, the, asset, recovery, uh, the asset Recovery Authority to take it up after the DCI and uh, recover, uh, recover properties from these people. And now they can uh, take care of the people who have lost their property in that land, who have lost their houses who have lost their land, who have lost their investments. And that's the truth. I have also said that the list that was given by the DCI must be expanded because I think this is a Macau list only. But where is the big fish? Where is the big fish? Where, where is the, 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 the party leader? And therefore DCI ca ca cannot just target the smaller fish. My point is there are bigger fish than Macau. All of them. Who are they? And I've mentioned uh, one of them is Kalonso. I have mentioned the other one is Wavinya. <laughs> My friend, remember, in Ad River, already more than 20 people have approached me, telling me I'm a victim, so and so sold land to me, oh, I'll use their pencil. And even I have now clips that I can share with you how these deals were done. People just quickly just telling you, you go there, in Yako, you go there, you build there, and if you don't build, I'm going to take it tomorrow. You go build, we have, and I'm going to share with you immediately after this. So these things are there. Yeah. Okay, the victims are coming uh, to us. Uh, they already now know the truth. They know the people who now claiming to be helping them, they are the, they are the people actually who fleeced them. Yeah. Anyone here who believes Kalonzo uh, can be the next president, you obviously daydreaming. I mean, it's not worth the effort even discussing because these are very, very serious matters that should not be mixed with some mediocre jokes.